It's another video on Back of the Net, and this time we've got another funnel flashback. And Tony's here. How are you doing, Tony? Yes, I'm fine. Fantastic. And uh, today we're going to look uh, a bit, we're going to carry on the story where we left off. Uh, and we're at Southampton at the moment, aren't we? Yeah, we're at Southampton. I've just made my debut. That's right. So uh, following on from that, really, I made my debut, but I didn't just carry on with the first team. I went back into the reserves and that, you know, because I was, I was still inexperienced. Yeah. And uh, so I spent the next few months, I was either sub for the first team or in the squad or I was back playing for the reserves. Um, it wasn't that long ago that I was a non-league player. And, and here I am now. I'm trying to get in the Saints first team with a forward line of Ted McDougall, Phil Boyer and yeah. Peter Osgood. Yeah. So, you know, it was expecting too much to just walk in there straight away but i was very lucky i mean ozzy ozzy was a great guy lovely bloke really nice and a fantastic footballer but um my big opportunity came one day i overheard there was talk of um ozzy going to america to play okay and uh, i was thinking wow i hope he does go to america because <laughs> if he goes to america there's a good chance i'm gonna get a Back, yeah. you know, up into that first team, team and scored like so. Uh, as it happened, he was given an unbelievable offer to go and play for Philadelphia Fury. Wow, uh, more money than he would have made in years in England. Really? Oh, yeah, it was big time. Yeah, big money. And uh, he went, and then I got more chances. Then, um, there was myself. And Trevor Hebbard, another youngster, he played in midfield and, you know, he could score goals and he was uh, a very good player up and down the pitch. He was so fit. And uh, we shared like playing and being sub between us, really. But, uh, you know, I, I started playing, you know, a few more games in the first team. I remember a couple of games, was one against Crystal Palace. I think that game... The day before, there was a chance of myself or Tony Seedy playing in the match. One of us was going to play and one of us could be sub. And uh, Tony Seedy got the nod to play and I was sub. Uh, the match, was, it was on match of the day as well. Oh, wow. And um, unfortunately, in the first half, Tony broke his leg, got injured. Ooh. And I came on and scored both the goals. So, uh, yeah, it was a great day for me, but unfortunately for Tony Seeley, ex Bournemouth player, yeah, um, who's now in Hong Kong, uh, it wasn't such a good day. And, and there you go. I said about Peter Osgood, lovely lad. Tony Seeley, great lad as well. Yeah. Yeah, he was a good lad. Lucky at the time. There were so many good players and nice people in Southampton, you know, around the ground and the players. It was brilliant. And, um, there was another game against uh, Fulham, evening game away at Fulham. I managed to score in that game. I seemed to, I was luckier because I played with some really good players and I was, I got myself in the right positions and uh, I did manage to score some vital goals. It was, yeah, it was brilliant. I was actually scoring for fun, really, because it seemed every time I played for the first team, I scored. How funny. Yeah. And then, um, say, I scored quite a few vital goals. And um, the highlight, really, was when we played Orient away and we clinched promotion that night. And uh, I was I started that game and uh, we did go 1-0 down. And uh, I scored a header. And it was, to be fair, I mean, I didn't score many goals with my head. And that was a brilliant goal. <laughs> yeah, something I'll never forget that night. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, you know, what really happened was because I came from non-league like a year ago. Yeah. It was it's an easy headline for all the uh, the newspapers. And I did, I get lots of um, 
great storylines about me. And it was brilliant for me, but at the same time, I was just one player in a, in a team of really good players, you know, and yeah. because of what had happened to me in a short space of time, I hit the headlines with it. But, you know, it wasn't just me. We had some really good players. That's good. Yeah. That's a nice picture there, Tony, of you scoring that goal there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, mainly because I didn't score many with my head. Usually it was <laughs> in the six-yard box. I was going to ask that. I mean, there, there, is that, there you go, celebrating there. Yeah. That's brilliant. Is that Ted but, there, is it? That's Ted Madhu, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ted was good for me. He helped me a lot. But, you know, I, I joked and I said just now, I said, you know, I didn't score many from my head. And yeah. a lot of times it was, you know, tapping a ball in the six-yard box. But I think it's an old adage. People turn around and say, oh, yeah, he scores loads of goals, but he just taps them in. But what they yeah. don't realise is you've got to have the sense to know the position to get into. Yes, where to, take, where to take you the marker, take him away, yeah. get a yard, half a yard. And you scored a goal and everyone think, oh, that was easy. But it wasn't easy because you had, you had a lot of thinking what, what you had to do beforehand. Yeah, completely. So, yeah, completely. that's cel celebrating with Flory after the game. That's a great one. And this one's the whole that the whole dressing room there, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, Pe Peachy got changed a bit quickly there. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he came off at half time, so. Yeah. He must have come off, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's me on the far right-hand side next to Phil Boyer and Alan Ball. Yeah, that's right. I can see you there. And Ted sitting down. Yeah, that's brilliant. They're brilliant yeah, photos. You see, uh, right in the corner, drinking from the can with his... Yeah. Um, his he's got his two fingers up, messing around. Yeah. Chris, that's Chris Nickel. Oh, is it? Oh, you wouldn't know yeah. it. Would you? you can't tell, can you, with the things in front of his face? Yeah. No... He was a good lad, Chris Nickel. Yeah, good, very good player as well. Good defender. Fantastic, Tony. Yeah, so we're starting to get into into the into the team more now, aren't we? Well, yeah. I mean, that was um, that was gaining promotion. But then after we gained promotion, what they did just a quick story. After we got promotion, it was time to get new contracts because we're in the big league now. Yeah, it's like the old first division was what the Premier League is now. And um, you, th you think it was like 40-odd years ago. There was no, there were no agents about. You know, not many players had agents, and I certainly didn't. But uh, what basically happened was all the top stars went up to Laurie's office first, and uh, I definitely wasn't one of the top stars, although I was successful uh, in the last half of the season. I wasn't a top star. And, uh, you know, you've got Alan Ball going up to his office, then Ted McDougall, Phil Boyer, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the trouble was what you didn't want to be, you didn't want to be too far down the line because the first ones up got the most money. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember when I went up, this is honest truth, I went up and uh, I knew, you know, I was gonna, obviously going to say, well, whatever Laurie said, I was going to say I wanted more. So he's offered me an increase on my contract. And, like... I just felt lucky to have a contract at Southampton because I was a non-league player, you know, the year before. So I, was, I wasn't bothered about getting a rise. But at the same time, when you get the opportunity, you, you want to take it and get some extra money. So Laurie's offered me um, a rise on my um, a big increase on my previous contract. And uh, I've asked for more. And then uh, Laurie said, uh, well, why, why do you want more? I said, well, I've got a car now, boss. <laughs> his, his next words were, but you don't need a car. And my next words were, uh, okay, where do I sign? <laughs> it was simple, <laughs> simple as that. Oh, you probably had your number then, Tony. <laughs> but to be fair, most of us younger lads, you know, we didn't earn fortunes, no. but we just love being professional footballers, you know, because who wouldn't want to be, you know, it's, it's, it was a great life. Do you think, Tony, that the, the money that, you know, the higher you up game, the, the more the money, but still the money in the game now, <clears throat> do you think that can kind of blur it a little bit? You know, the, 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 well, the prestige of it just being about, you know, well, I'm a footballer. Wow. You know, it's so lucky. Yeah. I think 
my wife would have probably been quite happy if I was a footballer now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, t- to be honest, I- I'm happy with what I did when I played and what I earned. I enjoyed yes. what I did, so I-, I can't complain. And I just say good luck to the lads now for earning, you know, lots of money. I just there are just times when I watch games and I think you do earn a lot of money. You could put a lot more into the game than you do. Yeah, you know, but um, too comfortable, maybe. Yeah, that's right. Nothing yeah, else they, to go for, you know. When they, they they don't have to do it, whereas we had to do it week in, week out, year in, year out, because we weren't. None of us were set up. And what about in terms of like salary or salary, whatever your wage, wage and bonus? So how would what would that be like? Would you get extra for scoring yeah. goals? Would it be significant or? Yeah, I'll tell you what happened was, if I think correctly, when I was at Southampton. I earn, uh, I think, fifty pounds a week, and then if you was in the first team, you got, I think, another fifty pounds. But if you was in the squad, because there was a squad in those days, in those days, like only twelve went. So if you was in the twelve, I double my wages during the season. So instead of getting fifty pound, I'd earn a hundred pound. But yeah. also, if he was in the squad, and the squad sometimes went down to about sixteen players or a bit more than that, and that was like the peripheral lads who were you nearly made it into the first team, but you didn't. You're playing for the reserves. You got twenty five pound if the first team won. Right. So, and then and what used used to happen was on a Friday, everyone used to get to the. Um, the changing room, the first team changing room, look at the squad and just see if you was in the one of the last few because you knew if you was in there, that's another 25 quid for you. Yeah, good. I mean, now they'd laugh at 25 quid, yeah. wouldn't they? Wouldn't mean anything to them, would it? Wouldn't no, that's to right. No. Uh, oh, that's brilliant, Tony. And we got next week, where we, what, what's happening next week? What, what, can you give us a little teaser? Well, a new season starts. Okay. What's going to happen? A new season starts, a new era. Brilliant. Fantastic. Can't tell you too much. I've just told you all the wages I earn, all that massive amounts of money I used to earn. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, Tony, thank you. I really enjoy uh, having the, the funnel flashback with you and looking at your fit pictures, and I'm looking forward to doing it again next week. It's always a pleasure. Super. See you okay. later. See you later.